I've been wanting to refresh our home office with a fresh, modern aesthetic and back to nature vibes. Our home office was looking really lackluster and dull. It, it could use some help and a fresh look. It's been a while since I put any energy into the space, and since I work from home and this is where I spend most of my time every day, I decided it was time to infuse some energy in here. There are two key factors I think about before I begin styling the space. First, decide the vibe. What vibe and energy do I want the space to have? How do I want to feel when I walk into the space every morning to begin my workday? The second key factor will make a space really interesting. You. You are the key. It's your personal taste and style, your interest, what inspires you, your vibe, how your mind works. These things form our personal aesthetic and breathe life into our space. Transforming a space doesn't happen overnight. It takes time, but each little upgrade feels incredibly satisfying. This project on our home office began as a question. Is it possible to get multiple layers of paint, primer, and stain off of these hardwood shelves and get down to the natural grain again? I started removing the shelves and cleaning the frame while Michael was outside starting up his planer. He attempted to plane the first shelf. It seemed to work. He fed each shelf through the planer a few times until he could finish them with his sander. He used the sander to finish the edges too. He was able to remove the paint, the primer, and the original dark stain. We're using linseed oil to finish the shelves. A little too much right here. You don't need this much. A little linseed oil goes a long way. Then we worked it in with a soft rag, moving with the direction of the grain. We let it absorb outside for about half a day, and now it's time to bring the shelves in, set them back up, and see how the natural mango hardwood looks in the office. We love it. I love it so much. When I originally painted it, I thought that was my only option to hide the stain because we didn't know how deep the stain went into the wood. And this round shelf is by Anthropology. It was originally $1,400 on their website about five years ago. I bought it secondhand at an estate sale for $350. We wanted to take advantage of this big east facing window. East facing windows are prime real estate for houseplants. They love that morning filtered sunlight and afternoon shade. So we decided to pull Michael's desk away from the window just enough to fit an Ikea shelf in the corner to create a new space for plant styling. I'll start with putting these plants on the shelf for now. Almost all of these are Anthurium. I have a few baby Anthurium like this Anthurium Crystallinum Doriaki hybrid, Anthurium Politiflorum. I have a few of those, Anthurium Vitarifolium, a cutting from a Philodendron El Chaco Red, and a baby Anthurium Politiflorum. We found this seven foot majesty palm at Lowe's. We've had it for a couple of months now. I didn't want to repot it straight away because I was nervous about taking care of it, so I didn't want to disturb the roots and its pot uh, right away in a brand new environment. I just wanted to kind of let it settle into my, my indoor climate here first and just see how that went before I did anything. But now it's ready for a repot. It had a bit of cold damage on its older leaves, but it has new fronds coming in and the trunk feels solid, the roots look healthy. There are some exposed roots on the surface of the soil. It's outgrown its nursery pot though, definitely root bound and ready for a repot. It came out of the pot pretty easily. It's very root bound as you can see here, but the roots are firm and healthy and you can see the fresh white root tips that are actively growing. And the roots look great. There's no root rot, no soft mushy roots. Everything looks good. I tried loosening the roots slightly, but not too much. I didn't want to damage any of the healthy growing roots. I already had this pot from Home Depot. It's a resin composite pot by Southern Patio. We have two of these pots in different sizes and they've been excellent if you need a large pot that's thicker and looks nice like ceramic but isn't as heavy. For soil, I just mixed up a blend. I had some palm potting soil left over and I mixed that with coconut core and a little bit of perlite mixed in. The goal is good drainage, but it has to hold enough moisture so it doesn't dry out too fast. Majesty palms are native to Madagascar. They live along riverbanks and enjoy consistent moisture. And if the soil gets too dry, they'll end up with dry brown frond tips. So I'll be watering this majesty palm about two to three times a week during spring and summer. I'm sprinkling a thin layer of systemic granules by Bonide on the surface of the soil for pest control, just in case any gnats are making plans to move in here. I've tried most of the natural gnat repellent remedies out there, but this stuff really knocks out a gnat infestation. I like to do a treatment when doing a repot for prevention. 
My go-to top dressing for palms is coconut husk chips. They're light and airy, they allow aeration to reach the soil, and it looks good with palms. This palm is going right next to our east-facing window where it can get morning sun and bright light throughout the day, and I'll see how it does there. On the round shelf, I decided to display some of our work-related items from our gym and mineral business, like this wooden jewelry bus from Indonesia, paired with African clay beads, Ethiopian opal beads, and a beaded necklace made from a chondrite meteorite that was found in the Sahara Desert. Samples of zebra rock, a rare collectible sedimentary stone, found only one place in the world, a small deposit located in the remote region of the Kimberley in Western Australia. Since I use my camera gear almost daily, I keep some gear out and ready to go, like this Sony shooting grip and the Sony 90mm macro lens. I use this lens for shooting a lot of the crystals and minerals for our website. On the second shelf, I'll organize my meteorite collection. These are gibbons from Namibia, Mundrabilla from Australia, and Gold Basin from Arizona, a stony chondrite from the Sahara Desert, a tiny fragment of the world's largest known meteorite mass ever found, the Hoba in Namibia, I'm using this Lucite display for the Sakotolin meteorite from Russia. Really smooth shape and regmaglyphs on this specimen. It feels good to hold in your hand. Simchan, a stony iron palisite meteorite from Russia. This slice has nice, transparent Jimmy olivine windows. This is an oriented NWA chondrite. It was found in Algeria in 2022. The surface features we see here are fluted regmaglyphs. They tell us about the orientation of the meteor as it entered Earth's atmosphere, traveling at a high rate of speed from 25,000 miles per hour up to 160,000 miles per hour. This is our heaviest meteorite. It's a 1.7 kilo Gibeon that fell in prehistoric times in Namibia. The Gibeon meteor originated 4.5 billion years ago from the molten core of an ancient asteroid located between Mars and Jupiter. Gibeons can have incredibly interesting sculptural shapes. I'll put my other wooden jewelry bust on this shelf. I have my Libyan Desert Glass collection in this clear acrylic display box. Libyan Desert Glass is a tektite, a natural impact glass that formed during a meteorite impact. No other tektite in the world looks like Libyan Desert Glass. It has this golden glow that is just gorgeous. It formed 29 million years ago and is found only in the Great Sand Sea, a remote area deep in the Sahara Desert. In ancient Egypt, the Egyptians would find Libyan Desert Glass and they started napping cutting tools and arrowhead points out of the tektite. I have a few tools in my collection, but they're hard to come by. This is an excellent example here. You can see the napping along the edge. The Egyptians also used Libyan desert glass as an ornamental gemstone. If you happen to see a picture of King Tutankhamun's breastplate, the centerpiece is a scarab carved out of Libyan desert glass. A beautiful quality Libyan desert glass at that. On the bottom shelf, I'll store some of my filming gear. This is the Yuko 62-inch smartphone tripod in mineral white. I got it on Amazon. And sometimes I'll use this Niwer LED selfie light. It's a bicolor mini panel light. It has three settings, daylight, warm white, and a mix of both. It's also adjustable brightness. And most of the time I'm just using it to light product, so it works well for that. This shelf really needed some lighting, so I decided to add these mini LED accent spotlights that I already had from Amazon. They're aluminum with a matte white finish. They're 3000 Kelvin, so it'll create a warm, cozy ambiance in the evening. It would be great if these were wireless LED lights, but since I'm working with cords, I'll have to do some cable management. I'll set up one of the lights behind the wooden jewelry bust and direct it up to the wall for soft backlighting. I'll run the cord out to the side and it'll follow the shelf frame down to the outlet on the floor. On the other side of the shelf, I'll use the second light and direct it onto the meteorites. I'll arrange the cords so it can follow the shelf frame down to the floor just like the other side. Lighting really levels up the atmosphere of a space. It can give it a totally different vibe. I'll use these lights for now, and if I try any other lighting setups in the future, I'll do an update in another video. To add some natural texture in the space, we have this saguaro cactus skeleton that I found at an estate sale for $40. I use it as a plant stand for my philodendron patriciae. I got this plant as a seedling from Equigenera about two years ago, so it was imported from Ecuador. Its leaves are beautiful. I love these long pendant leaves with the pleated texture. It is a tropical plant native to the wet rainforest of Colombia, so it loves water and it is a climbing philodendron, but it climbs slowly with tightly spaced internodes. I've had mine on the same wood branch totem for two years now, and it's just now reached the top, so I'll repot it and give it a new branch soon. We had these wireless LED lights by Brilliant Evolution. I got them in a set of three on Amazon. They're made for under the cabinet lighting, so you can stick them to 
just about any surface. To brighten up the corner in front of Michael's desk, I'll put one on each plant shelf, right next to the walls, and as they shine upwards, the walls in the corner and the ceiling will have a soft glow, and they come with a remote too. They put out a subtle light, so they're not very bright, but I'll just experiment with them for now, and if I end up changing up this corner in the future with different lighting, then I will definitely do an update in a future video. I had this pink marble skin on my laptop for the past four or five years. It's pretty, but it doesn't fit my taste anymore, but I left it on there anyway. Well, today is the day. It's coming off. I'm really enjoying a simpler, more minimal aesthetic these days. The skin was stuck on there really good, so it took me a few minutes to finally get it off, but it came off clean and didn't leave any residue. In my desk drawer, I keep my main tech items that I use on a regular basis for videos and photography. Multiple Samsung SSDs, ProGrade card reader, there are a few items that I use, but they don't need to be in here, like this Polar Pro circular polarizer and variable ND filter, cables, my old Sony earbuds. I've been editing with these for years. They still work, but eventually I'll have to invest in better quality headphones for editing audio. If there's any headphones that you'd recommend checking out, let me know. I started by separating the tech items that I reach for every day from the items that I don't. And then I took those items that I don't reach for every day and I separated those into two categories, DSLR camera accessories and smartphone accessories. I organized both into separate clear acrylic boxes. So depending on what I'm using to film or photograph with that day, I know right away where to find exactly what I need. I found this felt drawer liner at Ikea. I thought it would be perfect for my desk, so I'm gonna try that and see how it works out. I also found a few other things that I wasn't expecting, like this Camadoria Cataractarum palm, also known as a cat palm. They make gorgeous indoor palms, and they're also non-toxic, so they're pet safe. And I couldn't believe the price when I saw it. It was only $10, and Ikea was selling these as mixed palms, so that's what it said on the label, so I didn't actually know what type of palm I got until I got home and researched it and found out it was a cat palm. Okay, back to the felt drawer liner. It's a charcoal gray, and the liner comes with these pre-marked white lines on the back to use as a guide while you're cutting it to the size you need. And I thought it would create a clean, modern look with the tech items and a cozy feel in the drawer. It also has ridges to help prevent things from sliding around. Adding a nice drawer liner is such a simple upgrade, but it gives a more premium feel and professional look. I enjoy checking out all the latest cameras, lenses, and photography gear that's out there, but I also try to maintain a minimal collection. I like to keep everything light and tight so it's easy for on the go, travel, and run and gun style shooting. While we're on the topic of minimal yet premium quality tech gear, when I upgraded my iPhone this year after having the rose gold 6s iPhone for the past eight years, I was wanting my next iPhone to have a more stealthy vibe. Something with a minimalist aesthetic that fits in well with my tech and camera gear. I think I may have found my favorite iPhone case of all time. This is the Kadabi Sheath iPhone case. It's a sleek, minimal case with the protection I need, but none of the added bulk. It has the perfect texture, sleek, but not slippery, grippy, but not sticky. Kadabi also makes screen protectors that are designed to fit with their phone cases, so I ordered the sheath and one pack of crystal shields. They come in a pack of two on the Kadabi website, and I couldn't be happier. I love the minimalist aesthetic and the quality premium feel. We decided to switch out Michael's old desk and replace it with the FlexiSpot sit-stand desk that we've been using in our mineral room. And Michael's old desk is now in our mineral room as our work desk in there. After using standing desks for the past few years and realizing how much I enjoy their versatility and having the option to switch back and forth between sitting and standing throughout the day, I plan to eventually change all of our work desks to sit-stand desks. And one feature that's really useful is programmable height presets. With one touch of a button, your desk goes exactly to the height you want. Both of our sit-stand desks have white frames with glass tops. They look similar, but they're from different brands and the designs are different. So Michael is now using the FlexiSpot desk and my desk is by Apex Desk. If you're going to be working for long hours on a glass top, it is more comfortable to have a desk pad for your arms and wrists, which we don't have at the moment, but I am looking at some options. There are some desk setup upgrades I'm planning on doing soon, but that'll be coming in another video. Our mesh desk chairs are the Setu in Alpine by Herman Miller. They specialize in creating modern ergonomic designs for the office with superior design quality and craftsmanship. The Setu chairs cost around $1,200 new online, but I was able to find these secondhand on Craigslist for $75 each. 
Also in our home office, we have the Dyson Air Multiplier Pedestal Fan in white. We got it at Costco about five years ago, and it's still going strong. We also have this Elecombe's humidifier for the plants, and for Michael, he really likes it too. We have it next to the Majesty Palm. Since Majesty Palms have thin, wispy leaflets that are really prone to drying out, they enjoy some extra humidity around them. And the humidifier with all the plants adds a relaxing rainforest vibe to the space. Now this isn't a home office item, but it's only about 10 feet from my desk and I use it throughout my workday. It's the Bellicon Rebounder, made in Germany. I bought it about a year ago. I ordered it online on the Bellicon website and it shipped to us from Germany. It's the best piece of home workout equipment we've ever owned. It was well worth the investment. It works every cell and muscle fiber in your body. It gets your circulation flowing, pumps your lymphatic system, gives you you more energy. It's a fun workout that I never get bored with, and it's ready to go anytime without any setup or warm up. Throughout my workday, I'll take short five to 10 minute breaks and jump on the Bellicon for a five minute workout. Then I'll make a smoothie and I'm back to work in no time, totally re energized. In the evening, the warm white lights create a cozy, relaxing atmosphere and give the mango wood shelves a soft, warm glow. And at 3000 Kelvin, they mimic my favorite lighting, golden hour. Sunlight at golden hour is about 3000 to 3500 Kelvin. Accent lighting draws our eye to the subject. It brings out the rich texture and details, and we can use it to highlight some of our favorite things like artwork, sculptures, interesting items that we collect, or in this case, meteorites, ancient cosmic art from space. These were just a few simple updates I wanted to start with, using mostly items we already had, but there's still a few more updates I'm planning to do. Our home office already feels more relaxing to be in now, and adding plants is one of the fastest ways to revive the energy and aesthetic of a space. And the more nature I have around me, the better I feel. I'd like to expand the back to nature vibe and energy into our living room next. Since our home office and living room are connected, connecting them energetically too will make everything feel more cohesive. In our striving for improvement and a better quality of life, we don't want more stuff. We simply want the right stuff that makes life a little bit easier and more enjoyable, like creating the right environment so we can relax and enjoy life more, and the right workspace so we can be creative, productive, and efficient. Okay, time to water the plants. I've got my new IKEA watering can. Love it. It is, it is lovely. It works much better than my last one that used to spill water every time I tried to water. It would come out the top. Anyway, uh, I really like how this is going, but there's still more ideas that I, I want to implement here. So like on our desks, I want to create different desk setups, like on top of our desks for organization and uh, workflow and stuff like that. So I have more ideas of what I want to do, but I at least wanted to get this started and share this video with you. So I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you guys so much for hanging out and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.